Uranium consists of two major isotopes. So we have uranium-235 and uranium-238. And let's say you wanted to separate the two isotopes from each other. One way to do it is to use a mass spectrometer. And a variation of this was done in World War II to separate uranium isotopes. You can separate them because they have different masses. Uranium-238 has more neutrons than uranium-235, and so therefore it has more mass. All right, so let's see how a mass spectrometer works. So the first step is ionization. So we're gonna assume that we knock off one electron from each one of our isotopes here. So if we knock off an electron from each of these isotopes, we're going to form a positive charge. We're gonna form a positive ion. So I'm gonna draw in, I'm gonna draw in a, a positive charge right here. The next step is to accelerate the ions over a potential difference. And so we're going to accelerate the ions over potential difference delta V. And I should warn you, there's gonna be a whole lot of physics in this video, so hopefully you are comfortable with, with that. All right, so we accelerate the ions over a potential difference, and that means we're going to get a final velocity of those ions, so final velocity V. So let's see how to calculate that final velocity. Well, the amount of work that's done in order to accelerate the ions is equal to Q, which is the charge on the ions, times the potential difference. So Q on the ion times delta V, which is the potential difference. That's equal to the kinetic energy of the ion. So that's 1 half mv squared, where m is the mass and v is the velocity. All right, let's solve for the velocity of the ion. So let's solve for V, just do some algebra. So V squared would be equal to, this would be two Q delta V, all right, divided by M. And so we could just take the square root of both sides. So the velocity is equal to the square root of two times the charge. And this is really delta V, but I'm just gonna write, I'm just gonna write capital big V here. Now, potential is different from velocity, right? So, uh, so, so this V is different from this V, all right? So this is divided by the mass. So that's the final velocity of the ion. So when the ion enters this portion of the mass spectrometer, it's moving in this direction with a velocity V. This region of the mass spectrometer has a magnetic field in it. So let's say we have a uniform magnetic field that's pointing directly out of the page. So it's coming straight at you. And so this is meant to represent like if you're looking at uh, the tip of an arrow, like if you point an arrow directly at your eye, right, you would see the tip of the arrow pointing at you. So this is the magnetic field. And in physics, we represent magnetic field with B. All right, the moving ion is going to experience a magnetic force due to the presence of that magnetic field. And that magnetic force is equal to Q, which is the charge of the ion once again, V cross B. So let's run through these things. Q is the charge of the ion, V is the velocity of the ion, and B is the magnetic field. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is figure out the direction of the magnetic force on that ion. And to do that, we use one version of the right-hand rule. So V is our first vector, and that's the velocity vector. And the velocity vector is in the plane of the page directed up. And so you can see I have my fingers pointing in the direction of that velocity vector. So it's flat in the plane of the page, but it's pointing towards the top. All right, next we think about our second vector, right? That's our magnetic field vector, which is coming directly out at us, right? So it's like pointing at us, that's so straight out of the page. And so I curl my fingers in the direction of that second vector. So if you think about, uh, if you think about my finger here, right? Think about like that being the tip of my finger, right? So we're curling it uh, in the direction of this vector, which is pointing out of the page. All right, finally, Finally, once we finish curling our fingers here, the thumb, your thumb of your right hand is forced to point in the direction of the magnetic force on a positive charge, All right? So my thumb has to point to the right here. So that's the direction of the magnetic force on this ion. So when the ion enters the magnetic field, it's going to experience a magnetic force pointed to the right. The magnetic force is in the plane of the page. So notice there's a 90 degree angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. And so if the, ma if the magnetic field weren't there, the, the ion would just continue moving in this direction, but since, straight up, but since there is a magnetic force, right, it's gonna cause the ion to deflect. It's gonna cause the ion to move in a circle. So the ion is going to move in a circle 
All right, so it's gonna move in this direction. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to sketch in a semicircle here so you get the idea. So there's my semicircle. And a little bit of, of intuition about why the ion is going to move in this circular path. But think about the ion at this point, right? The velocity would be in this direction, right? And if you use your right hand rule, you would see that the magnetic force would be pointing in this direction. So once again, 90 degrees to your velocity. So the magnetic force always points towards the center of this circle. And so that's a centripetal force. All right, so we have a circle here, or a semicircle is what I've drawn, of radius r. All right, so this is a, this is a certain radius r. Let me go ahead and make that. Uh, let me let me just do a better radius than that. So let's uh, let's sketch that in. So this is radius. I'll make it lowercase r. We can calculate uh, we can calculate what that radius of the ion should be by using our equation for magnetic force. So let's get some more space down here. And let's rewrite our equation for magnetic force. Magnetic force is equal to QV cross B, which is the same thing as QVB sine theta, where theta is the angle between your velocity vector and your magnetic field vector. Let's go back up here. The velocity vector is in the plane of the page pointing up. The magnetic field vector is coming straight out at us. So that's 90 degrees between those two vectors. And so let's, uh, let's get some more space down here. We know that sine of theta, that'd be sine of 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is equal to one. So this would just be Q V times B times one. Well, force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? So uh, Newton's second law. And we know the ion is moving in a circular path, so this would be the centripetal acceleration. So we have QVB is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. QVB is equal to the mass, the centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R. So we can cancel one of our V's, so we get QB is equal to MV over R, and so we can solve for R. R would be equal to MV, this is velocity, divided by QB. So now we have the radius of the circle, and, and we can go a little bit further. We can take the velocity that we solved for earlier, and we can plug it in here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So this would be equal to m over qb times the velocity, which is square root of 2q, remember this was the potential difference, over m. All right, to get rid of that square root, we would have to square both sides. So we square r, so we get r squared, and then we square all of this. So this would be equal to m squared over q squared b squared all right, this would be 2QV over M. So now we can cancel a few things. We can cancel one of the M's and we can cancel one of the Q's. So we get R squared is equal to M2 times the potential difference divided by Q times B squared. All right, so take the square root to find the radius. So we, we take the square root of both sides. So we get r is equal to the square root of 2m times the potential difference v divided by qb squared. So finally, we have, uh, we have the radius of our circle here. And let's think, about, let's think about these things. The magnetic field is constant. There's no change in the magnetic field. There's no change in the potential difference. And if we assume that the charge on both ions is the same, right, the only thing that's different between those two ions is the mass. Right? So we can, say that, uh, we can say that if we increase this number, I've right, increased the mass, right? We're going to increase the radius. So if we increase the mass, just looking at our equation, we're going to increase the radius. And I should point out that we have, uh, we have hiding in here, right? An m over q ratio, so m over q ratio. So m over q is the mass to charge, mass over charge ratio here. And you'll see this written as m over z in a lot of mass spectrometry examples. So m over z is the mass to charge ratio. 
All right, so for our purposes, right, we're just trying to think about how the mass affects the radius of the circle that the ion will move in. So we've seen if you increase the mass, you increase the radius. So let's go back up here and let's look at our isotopes again. All right, and let's look at this circular path that we drew. All right, so if I, if I wanted to draw the path for, um, well, let me go ahead and just label this one right here. So let's say that this hits, where this ion hits, this represents the U235 ion, right? The one with the smaller mass. If we represent the one with the larger mass, right? So the U238 has more mass, that means that the radius of the circle is going to be greater. So let me, let me use blue here. We have a lot of things going on, so we have blue. So I'm gonna draw a path with a bigger radius, right? So I draw a path with a bigger radius. Again, uh, not the best drawing, but uh, we can see that with a bigger radius, this represents the U238 ion. All right, this is where those ions would hit in your mass spectrometer. And so this allowed us to separate our ions based on mass. And this final stage here, the detection stage, right? So there's a, there's a lot that goes into detecting these things. And in modern mass spectrometers, you're, you're not gonna separate isotopes. There are better ways to do that these days. Um, but this is just a nice way to introduce how a mass spectrometer works. In, in modern mass spectrometers, you're gonna use it to get very accurate masses, all right? And so we'll, uh, uh, in some other videos, we can talk about that.